Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about functional notation, which is a way that re we represent functions uh, that has become that will become very useful for us. Uh, at this at this stage, uh, we've used y equals things. So often we've done all right y equals, for example, three x plus one. Now the problem with that is that we're going to go into more than one variable um, on this side of the equation. So y's are not really going to be suitable. And so we can replace it with what's called a functional notation. These two here are exactly the same. This means g is a function of x. And that function is that the x value is multiplied by 3, and then you add 1 to the result. This one here says f is a function of x. It's not f times x. Be sure you're clear on that. So f is a function of x, it's a process that we apply to the value x. And that process is we're going to square it sub and put a change the sign. We're going to multiply the x value by 6 and subtract that from what we did. And then we're going to add 4 at the end. So this is a process, remember that, that's what a function is. And this is just a different notation. All right, here we'd have y equals f of x. Okay, so always think of f of x as the y value. Right, so if you look at this one here, for example, well, what do I mean by f of negative 3? Well, that means we're going to get this negative 3, and we're going to apply this process to it, as if the negative 3 is the x. So it would be negative of the negative 3 is being squared, because notice that it's the x squared, minus 6, and we're going to multiply our x value, which is negative 3, by 6 and then we're going to add 4. Now we simplify it. So really this amounts to just replacing the x with the negative 3. So we end up with negative 9 and we have a negative 6 times a negative 3 is a plus 18 and a plus 4. So this will become negative 9 plus 18 is 9 plus 4 which is equal to 13. So keep in mind that we still have found an ordered pair. The ordered pair just happens to be negative 3, 13 is my ordered pair. What if I want f of h? Well, I don't know what h is, uh, but we're going to find the pro we're going to apply the process of f on h instead of on x. And so wherever x is, I replace it with h. So it would be negative h squared minus 6h plus 4, and that would be it. Right, what about g of h plus 2? So in this case here we have h plus 2 is my value that we are applying the process g to, and the process of g is to 3 times the x value. In this case the x value is, x, uh, is h plus 2, so it's going to be 3 by h plus 2, and then we're going to add the 1 from here. So this, of course, when I distribute, this will be 3h plus 6 plus 1. So it'll be equal to 3h plus 7 would be my result. All right, so remember, we're looking for the y value. And the, again, these two would be ordered pairs. It would just be h, and then this is my y value. And this one is h plus 2 is the x value, and this would be my y value. All right, in this case here, our process is in fact 3x squared minus 7, and we want to find f of negative 2. So in other words, our x value is negative 2. So this will become 3, uh, so let's, this implies then, f of negative 2 becomes 3 by negative 2 is being squared, that's the x value. It's important to use the parentheses here. Minus 7 is equal to 3 by 4 minus 7 which of course is 12 minus 7, which is 5. Again, we found an ordered pair, remember, it would be negative 2, 5. If you look at this one here, we have a list of ordered pairs, and we say, well, what is f of negative 2? Well, I'm looking for the y value uh, when the x value is negative 2. Well, it's not this one. Ah, here it is here, so it's going to be 5. Okay. This one here we have a picture. Notice that zero is being mapped if I use f here to four. One is being mapped to five. 
and negative one is to five, uh, five as well. So what I have here, all right, is we have uh, f of zero, you can see here it's four. I have f of one here is equal to five, and f of negative one is being uh, producing five as well. And so <clears throat> notice that we don't have an f of two, so this is empty. Okay, so we don't have, uh, there is no f of negative 2. All right, uh, if you look at this one here, if we want f of negative 2, I'm looking for the x value of negative 2. So let's have a look here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's my negative 2. And if I run down that line, I get to here. If I go across to here, notice I will find what my value is because there's my point that I'm looking at. All right, so again, this looks like this would in fact be um, the value uh, negative 2. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this one here is negative 2 as well. So this would be in fact negative 2. Because this point here would be negative 2, 2. All right, so uh, this is how we uh, are going to work with functional notation. Very important, okay, when we're looking for, say, f of a certain value, then we need to put that value in for the x value and evaluate it. If it's an unknown quantity, then we just apply the same process right as what the function is saying to that particular unknown value whether it's just a single value or it's a composite value like this.